Hi, this is Anne with a quick walkthrough of this week's coding exercise. Um, I want to give you a sense of how I would approach this and a few tips about using um, Cloud9. So let's just pick up uh, where the slide where the slide says you've typed in the code from the software maintenance exercise. Um, that's what I have here. I believe this to be a faithful recreation of exactly what's in the um, in the exercise in the text. And at this point, if I got everything right, all I have to do is hit the magic run button. And I will see a couple of things happen. First of all, you see the object file, which is the compiled code created here in this folder. And then you see the output here. Now, um, two things about the setup. One thing you can do is take this window and move it up. And when you go to take a screenshot and save it, as you are directed to do for each of the, the little sub exercises here, it's a lot easier if you have all of that text just close to each other. And you could take a screenshot that looks just like that. Okay, that's all I really require. Be sure it's named hello one dot whatever your extension is, so I can match it with the exercise. Okay, um, I'm gonna move this down just a little bit to focus on the code. The other thing has to do with theme. Um, you can set up your Cloud9 environment to have a different colored theme than this. It usually starts out light, and I always have a little trouble remembering where we set this stuff. I think it's in, it's in preferences someplace. Um, Themes, under view, themes. Um, I happen to like Vibrant Ink. You could like anything you like. Um, really, some people like the basic theme with um, light colored. Personally, I don't care for that. Uh, it just seems harder on my eyes, but then I tend to work in an environment that has a lot of ambient light, so having a dark screen works for me. If you tend to work in a dark environment, it may be that having the, the screen be quite light colored will work for you. Uh, but one thing I urge you to do is find a theme like Vibrant Ink that really makes the comments show up. I've seen people choose a lot of dark themes that have these comments be in a really light gray. And I promise you that when you get files from me and the instructions are in the comments, you really want those comments to be easy to see and to read because they're important. And we'll be, um, you'll be graded sometimes on entering comments. So um, don't, find, don't use a theme that really makes these things hard to see, find, read. Okay, lecture over. Um, the second assignment um, this week is to, is to explore error messages some. This is like uh, when my younger daughter was learning to drive, I took her out on the freeway and I had her slow down and actually intentionally um, drive into the rumble strip just to see what it was like so she wouldn't panic the first time it happened to her for real. So what we're gonna do here is highlight this, duplicate it, and one of the nice things about C9, the reason I use this kind of weird naming convention, is if I've got a dot one there to start with, then if I do duplicate, it creates a dot two version for me. And use your dot two version to explore some error, errors that you can generate. You're gonna generate errors, so you might as well see some. So for example, just go through and think about things you could do wrong with any of these lines. If I forget the closing angle bracket here and I try to run this code, I get an error message that points where my missing character is. Is it a pretty obscure error message? Well, this one isn't too bad, missing terminating greater than sign character. But it can be obscure. If I forget to do a semicolon at the end of the line, remember that in JavaScript, they're actually optional. In C++, they are not optional. Um, it expected a semicolon before the closing bracket. One of the errors that um, I know you're going to 
you're going to do because we all do it to ourselves. It's a little, you wouldn't probably do it in a case this simple, but it's really easy to forget a closing bracket. And um, again, C9 in the compiler we're using is trying to give you pretty reasonable error messages, although it's pointing at this semicolon when the error is really more or less down here on this line. And I suppose that's because you could put the semicolon there and fix the problem and the code would work. But remember the coding conventions are, this should be down on the line by itself. Okay. Um, and appropriately unindented. So try working with um, different errors that you can introduce one at a time when you know what you did wrong. And just take a look at the error messages. For example, if you are missing this namespace standard, you get all sorts of error messages. And um, they may or may not. Um, so one thing it says is that C out, which has been working perfectly in this code, is not declared in the scope. There are two ways to fix this. You can always, when you're using stuff out of the standard namespace, preface each of your commands with standard, and then it'll run just fine. Okay, or I'm gonna control Z back to where I was. Um, you can simply have using namespace, namespace standard, and then you don't need to type that in front of each of these um, keywords. So um, I recommend that. What I would like you to do here is pick your favorite error that you create. Um, I kind of like this one because it is, um, it looks so disastrous for um, what is actually something very simple to fix. And then um, I bring this up here so you can see the whole thing. Take a screenshot, whatever is your favorite error you have introduced and understand, go ahead and take a screenshot of that and save it as hello.2. whatever your extension is. And then finally, um, make another copy of the one. Since you're gonna leave two broken, don't use it for um, the template for your third one. Go back to one, duplicate it, it'll become three, and finish the exercise uh, Right, the book wants you to end with something that says hello universe and don't forget to change both the actual output and the comment. Make sure your comment matches the current condition of your code. Uh, using the magic run button, which will compile whatever uh, source file you're currently working on, uh, it can be pretty easy to work in this environment. You don't really need the command line much, so um, why don't we go with that for a while? Uh, there was one more thing I was going to show you. Oh, just real quickly, the last thing you're supposed to do in this week's exercise is um, create a folder for um, starter files. And if I just highlight all of this, Okay, so again, I clicked on this. I came down here and held down my shift button and clicked on that, so I've got them all highlighted. I can simply drag those into the starter files. And then I have this neat, clean workspace. A uh, neat workspace is a happy workspace. So be sure that you have done the first exercise, taken the screenshot that you need with these starter files up where you find them originally. But before you are done, be sure that you have um, just neaten them up and put them down in this starter files folder inside week one. Thanks for listening.